Okay, welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to be looking at how to use raster images in Illustrator. So that means any sort of image that's a JPEG, PNG, um, TIFF, whatever, PSD, right? How to use those images in Illustrator and the things we can do with them, the things we can't do with them, and how we can use them as a resource to develop, um, you know, artwork based on those images. So to start with, let's just go ahead and create um, a square document. Um, I'm doing, you know, 2048 by 2048. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit create. And when I do that, right, met with the blank canvas as usual or the blank artboard. Um, so the first thing is, how do we get an image in here? Um, and what image should we use? Okay, so we can grab whatever image we want. So I'm going to go ahead and find something that I've already downloaded. And the way that you add an image or another file to uh, Illustrator document is you go to File and you go down to Place. And then you choose what you did. Now, I downloaded this beautiful image of Bob Ross the other day. So I'm going to go ahead and place Bob in the scene. And when you go to, when you click on place, you get um, this option. It says one of one. And it's got this little corner, arrow corner above the, like a thumbnail of the image. Where That corner is where it's going to draw from. So if I go right up to the top left, it's going to draw Bob in the top left corner of the image, right? And so now Bob is an object um, in our world, and we can we can transform Bob, right? We can rotate him. We can scale Bob. He doesn't have to stay the same proportions, um, right? We can kind of do everything that we could do when you place an image in Photoshop as well. It works the same, right? I can always copy and paste Bob. So we have, you know, a whole bunch of Bobs all over the place. Um, and we can use these, right, similarly, similarly to how we use other images in Illustrator, right? If I click on my free transform tool over here, I should be able to, um, right, stretch Bob around a little bit. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to, you know, warp him too much, um, but there are ways we can do that. So, right, so I can do some scaling and things with this image. Now, if the image has transparency, then it will have a transparent background, right? In this case, um, this image did not have transparency. So, um, and I can use this like any other object. If I want to clip it, this is one thing that you can do really nicely in Illustrator, and I'm actually gonna undo some of these steps real quick till I get Bob back to his normal self. There we go. Okay, so, right, I've got Bob here, and if I just want like a round cutout of his head, I can very easily come over here with the ellipse tool, hold down option, you know, get right between his <laughs> right between his eyes, click and hold and pull this out. And then if I use my selection tool, the letter V on the keyboard and select both objects, I can go up to object, go down to clipping mask and click make or hit command seven or control seven in Windows. Right. And now I've got this nice round cutout um, of Bob. So um, there, right, and then I could probably frame this and do some other things, but right, so you can just, if you're making, you know, if you're using Illustrator as a way to, you know, make a poster or make um, some other, you know, print material or something for a website, you can very easily just bring place images and use them as they are and use the tools of Illustrator to, um, hide or show different parts of those images. Okay, so that's one way we can use an image. So what are some other ways? So first I'm gonna double click to get into this clip group and I'm gonna grab Bob, I'm gonna copy Bob, and then I'm gonna double click to get out of the clip group and double click again just to make sure you saw that, right, I was in isolation mode so this bar is up here. And I just wanna make sure I'm all the way out to my base layer. I'm gonna paste Bob again. Now, this time we're going to look at one of the other ways that you can work with an image that you've brought in. So one of the things you can do is you'll notice with, when I have this selected, I have all of these options up top. I have embed, edit original, image trace, mask, and crop image. And so, um, and then I also have my opacity, right? So I can, right, I can make this more or less opaque, and I can also change that blend mode, right? So I could make Bob, I could set Bob to multiply. So if I pulled Bob over Bob, right, he would, you know, be significantly darker. Okay, so um, I'm going to leave this set to normal. 
Um, so what are these other options? So first, Edit Original would open this either in Photoshop or some other image editing program. Um, and then I could go in, make some edits, save it, and it, those changes would be updated in my Illustrator file. Um, the embed just means rather than right now, this is a linked file, which means if I was to, say, upload my Illustrator document as a um, somewhere um, and I had this image in here, um, when somebody went to open it, if I did not upload this image of Bob as well, that file, that bob.jpg or whatever I'm using, if I didn't upload that as well, then Bob wouldn't show up, right? There'd be essentially an empty box or they'd get an error when they opened it because the file wasn't there. Embedding it just makes sure it's there. This is really useful if you're sending these, you know, if you're using images like this and you're sending it to say a printer or, so, or a client or something like that, and you don't want to have to have them deal with, you know, a whole folder full of images, it's great, you can embed it. Um, however, that makes your file size grow substantially. So, you know, really the only reason to do that is if you're, is if you're, if you're at that stage in your project where you're ready to, to send it off to someone else. Okay, the other option here is image trace. So image trace, um, there's several different pr tracing presets. And what it does is it takes this image and it turns it, it vectorizes it, it turns it into a vector file. So if I just click on image trace, um, it will start with the default setting. Now, how do I adjust these? You know, what, where are my views? I have these options here and there's this image trace panel up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and you'll see my preset is default um, and with with this there is the tracing result is what I'm currently viewing. If I hold this right I can actually view my source um, and you have to like press and hold it. Um, there are I can manage my presets we're not going to talk about different presets yet but the view is the tracing result tracing result with outlines that shows me right where the paths are being drawn around it in that nice teal. Um, if I switch to outlines right it's just going to be the outlines I'm just going to see those shapes if I go to source without source image with outlines, it kind of shows me where it's drawing the outlines on top of my source image. Um, and then uh, there's just the source image if I just wanted to see the source image for some reason, right? So I'm gonna just go back to tracing result. And you'll see that, right, by default, the mode is set to black and white and the threshold is set to 128. That means that anything where the pixel brightness is more than, you know, is somewhere brighter in the scale of black to white is somewhere above half, um, it's going to be white. And if it's somewhere below half, it's gonna be black. And you can see that in this case, right, that shadows most of his face. So if I pull this down some, right, I should get less that's black and more that's white. You know, and as I slowly go, it actually looks like his afro is getting smaller and smaller, um, <laughs> which is kind of hilarious, right? And if I go up higher, eventually I would basically get um, if I snug this down just a little bit, I could get like just a full silhouette um, of his figure um, with this. Now, there's some more settings as well. So I'm gonna drop, drop this back down to 128 just so we can um, see what we're working with here. If I click on advanced, you'll see this is the information here. There's paths, there's 53, two colors, and 212 anchor point, or 1212 anchor points. So if I flip open that advanced option, I can adjust the number of paths, I can adjust the per number of corners, and I have this noise option, right? Each one of these, right, this tells you what it does. Path fitting, right, higher value means tighter fit. So if I crank this up higher, you'll see that um, it increases the number of paths, right? Now I have 53, I have a bunch more anchor points. If I crank this up even higher, right, I've got more anchor points and I get much finer detail. And with the corners, if I reduce this down to 0%, you'll see it makes a minor change and it softens things a little bit. If I crank it up to 100%, it's gonna make it much more uh, crisp would be the best option to say, right? So I'm gonna pull this back down to 70. Now this noise, um, right, it basically reduces the amount of noise. So if I crank this all the way up to 100, it's going to smooth things out and clean up some of those details, but I'm going to write, I'm going to lose details 
Whereas if I go down to zero, you can see all the little tiny specks and spots and things that show up. Now, there's two different methods here. So what does this mean, right? This means it creates outlines, right? So what it's doing is this white shape is one object and this black shape will be another object. If I do this overlapping, what that does is it means that it will choose whether, I don't know if it's gonna choose white or black, but it will choose one of these shapes as the base object and then this will be an object, the white object would be floating on top of it. And that doesn't really matter until we, if, unless we expand this and, and do some other things with it. Now, we can also create fills or we can create fills and strokes. So it'll actually um, stroke the lines that were on here. And you can see that I've got um, this stroke is set to 10 pixels. If I uncheck that, you'll see it gets a little bit narrower. Um, and so that's just another option that we've got. Um, if I go back to a budding, if I click on ignore white, what that does is it basically takes anything that's 100% white in the image and it makes it, it, it's, it doesn't exist any longer, right? So all I'm going to have is this black. So if I had um, another object under this, I'd be able to make some changes. So let's go ahead and actually do that. I'm going to, um, I'm going to deselect this image for a second. I'm going to go and just create an ellipse and I'm going to set the fill color to something other than white. Um, and then I'm going to send this to the back. So I'm going to range, send it back, and pull this down. So now if I select Bob again, you can see that I'm creating fills and I'm ignoring white, right? If I uncheck ignore white, then that object's going to be hidden because this white fill will be there, right? So really it depends on what you're doing as to why you would do that. So let's look at some of the other options here um, before we go any further. Now, some of these things are going to take a long time depending on your computer and how complex the image is. Um, this is a low uh, low resolution image, so it shouldn't be too bad, but I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, let's go to grayscale. And you'll see that it takes a bit of time. And now I've got this vectorized grayscale image of Bob Ross. And right now there's 50 grays, right? And so I can adjust this. So if I want something that's, you know, much simpler, right? I can go down to 15 or maybe maybe I just want to have like four different possible colors, right? So I come down here and now there's just four different values. And right, if I was going to be, say, using these um, to make screens for screen printing or, you know, panels for print making or whatever, what I would probably want to do if I want these colors to blend um, you know, in some way when I apply those inks, I would want to switch this to overlapping. And then I could separate each of these out and and essentially print one of, you know, make a screen for each layer and then color it whatever color I wanted it to be. Um, right, so that's, you know, one option. Again, if I, you know, if I pull this up to 100 pixels, it should, right, it's going to smooth some of those fields out and I'm going to get a lot less detail. If I have less corners, right, you can kind of, again, see that it rounds some of those things out and smooths it a bit. Um, and if I reduce the number of paths to 1%, um, right, I'm going to get a much choppier image, right? So it really, there's a lot of settings in here that you can, um, that you can adjust to, you know, make things, uh, more more or less detailed um you know it uh what am i trying to say let's see if i do 100 percent corners like this should make it smoother but yeah you can see that i get a little bit more choppy stuff um and then if i pull noise in um right i get a little bit i get those highlights in his eyes and some other detail on his face and his shirt and things like that okay so let's go ahead and switch again um, I'm going to open up the presets though. And so we've got high fidelity photo, low fidelity, three colors, six colors. And these are all just different settings that tweak the things we've been tweaking down below and give you a preset. So if I click high fidelity color photo, this one usually takes the longest. And if you're using a big image, um, it will take forever, right? So this is a high fidelity photo, right? You can see that it, it they, by default, this is set to 85 colors and you can kind of see how all of these are done. Um, 
And so there's a lot of paths on there, right? This is, if I zoom in, you can see that there's, right, all of these chunks of color that make up this image. Um, you know, and again, I can make adjustments here. My palette is full tone. Um, you know, I can, I can make some adjustments here. I could say limited. Um, and then it's going to set my max colors to 30. Um, and again, I can just drop this down to right, however many colors I want. Um, and, but it sort of chooses what colors those are. And this is one of the things where having the overlapping, if you were to go to expand, this would be nice because then you can just select these big color fields um, and, and recolor those independently of one another if you want to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at a couple other options here, right? So there's black and white logo, which, you know, is pretty obvious. Um, if I go back to my presets, um, sketched art, um, right? It automatically sets it to ignore white. Um, and this is good, again, right? You know, ideally for sketched art or line art or technical drawings, right? Silhouettes is gonna just blast the thing out. Um, yeah, so there's, you know, there's lots of possible options here in terms of the presets and then tweaking some of these settings. This is really useful um, for if you're bringing in, if somebody's drawn a logo or has a logo that they want you to work on, it, it works pretty well for, for some of those things. You know, it gets a little noisy and there's a lot of cleanup that you have to do, but it's a useful tool for bringing things in. So once I, let's say I've got this where I want it, but I want, um, I actually really liked it when I had six colors, but maybe we'll do seven. And, um, oh, well, or five, whatever. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and choose overlapping here. I'm gonna also check mark ignore white. Now, maybe I don't wanna, maybe I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna leave white on there as a layer. Um, so now I've done all of this. So how can I then use this thing or modify it in some way? What I do is I come up to the top of the window here and I click on expand. And once I've done that, it creates a group um, that is all the different paths um, that make up you know, this image that I've, that I was using. And so if I double click on this to, let's close this image, double click, there we go. Right, now I can select these different fields of color and you can see they're not, right, they are separated and I could go through um, and, you know, this is actually a really great use of time, right? So now it'd be great if these were all, if all of my, you know, different areas that I want colored the same were grouped together, right? Right now they're separated. So what I can do, one of the tools we can use is if I select something that's like this, you know, this tan color here, which note if I drag this, it's actually a whole lot of his face and there's this peach color hiding under there that's under the entire thing. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. So if I select this and I come up here to this select similar objects, tool that's on the very end and I click on this and just say fill color, right? What it will do is it's going to select all of the objects that have that same fill, right? So I'm actually being able to pull this apart and then I can just, you know, I can, I could potentially group those objects. Now, if I do that, it's going to cause some problems because it's going to be, some of them are on top of others and I'd have to rearrange some of these foreground colors. Um, Right, but so that's one of the ways that, right, you can quickly select everything that's the same color in an image trace that's like this. And then once I've got those all selected, right, I can always say, oh, Bob would love it if, you know, if he had this magenta glow and let's go ahead and do that selection as well. And, you know, change this to, I don't know, we're just gonna, you know, make Bob uh, really colorful. Um, and so, oops, right, so if I wanna do this and just keep, clicking on these select similar fill colored areas. Um, that's a good color. There we go, beautiful. And then this black zone here, let's go ahead and make that, you know, a nice bright green because there's nothing quite like uh, turning Bob Ross into a, a psychedelic nightmare. Uh, so, right, so this is image trace. These are, right, you can expand it. Um, and I would say just experiment with different images and see how that all works.